You're listening to Opinions of Beer. I prefer mead. You sent me to hell, Jason. I really just want to make everybody jealous. <laughs> I'm a person from Earth. Listen, what are we talking about? I reckon it sounds like opinions and beer. You can do it, dingo. Oh, I'm good. You're the smartest dumb guys I've ever met. <laughs> God, God, I love our intro. Hello and welcome to Opinions and Beer. I'm your host, Adam. Today is the road to Potomania. What part is this? Three, four, part four? I lost count. Okay, this is this is the final road to Potomania before WrestleMania. And then after WrestleMania, we'll do a recap, a review of how WrestleMania was. What? Now, Ed Ray... I'll be honest with you. I'm going to let you go on a little tirade in a second, but I I feel in my gut that this year's WrestleMania hasn't been built that well. I I can't put my finger on it, but I mean there's some personally, I think there's some good matches on the card, but the card hasn't been built up, so I'm not as I'm not that excited. For this year's WrestleMania. Now I'm going to go ahead and let you. I want you to tell me your thoughts and your opinions. This is the worst uh, booked WrestleMania event of all time. I mean, normally when you start booking WrestleMania, you want to start booking after the Royal Rumble. You know, after uh, after somebody wins the Royal Rumble, and even after the event is over, that's when booking begins for WrestleMania. Normally, <clears throat> it doesn't matter what your opening card is. It doesn't matter what your mid card is. Everybody's going to know what the main event is. But this year has been totally unstructured, if you will, and that has turned people the wrong way. Now, take for instance, some of the matches on the card are either too predictable or don't make sense at all. Take for instance, Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar. We've seen that match over a hundred times in the past five years or so. So what makes this any different than the past matches that they had? Sure, they've had some bouts for world championships or something along those lines, but still, we don't want to see Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins again, and I know for a fact that Brock Lesnar has been advertised for Saudi Arabia, so of course they're going to keep the belt on him, and then there is Baron Corbin versus Kurt Angle, which don't make a lick of sense at all. I mean, some people could argue it storyline-wise because of the general manager uh, spot anyway, but Baron Corbin is not a good wrestler for one good reason only. Because he's being poorly booked, and even if uh, you try to alleviate some of his character for a bit to allow him to actually wrestle, he's still not going to make a good impression on the audience because he does not have charisma. He is very boring. Now, I want to make a point. What if there's a, there's a rumor going around that that Baron Corbin is going to get squashed in like a very quick, like they're going to try to make it like maybe like a two-second match, like a Kurt Angle completely squash, squashes Corbin, and then someone else will come out into the ring and actually challenge Kurt Angle. I don't think it's going to work because you could see that age is already catching up to Kurt Angle, so you need somebody who is not only an excellent worker, but who could accommodate Kurt Angle to try to make a match look good. And, you know, with AJ Styles and Kurt Angle on SmackDown, I mean, it was it could have been a pretty good match, you know, but it was, it was pressed for time, obviously, because Kurt Angle was already blown up. I mean... They could have had more along the lines of having a quality match on SmackDown just not too long ago. But with Kurt Angle versus Baron Corbin at WrestleMania 35, I mean, couldn't you have uh, given Kurt Angle a better retirement match? Say, for instance, Finn Balor versus Kurt Angle instead of having Finn Balor wrestle Bobby Lashley for the thousandth time already? You don't think that a John Cena or The Undertaker showing up and challenging... Uh, Kurt Angle after he just got done tapping Baron Corbin out in three seconds. Well, The Undertaker unfortunately has not been booked. For I know, any- but he, could, they, he he wasn't booked last year, and he just showed up to face. That's what I'm saying. He just showed up to face Cena. What if Cena Cena could do the very same thing? Just show up to face Angle, or you know, Undertaker hasn't officially retired yet. He has not officially done. They could still have him come in. Give uh, you know have a little match with Kurt Angle, so Kurt Angle's final match is at with Undertaker at WrestleMania. But Undertaker uh, is appearing at a special event in Las Vegas that was that's prior to WrestleMania or something along those lines. So it's uncertain if he is going to show up because of that event. 
They're, but they are thinking that he's going to be booked for um, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, and that's uh, that's the thing about Saudi Arabia. You know, I don't blame anybody for wanting to go to Saudi Arabia for having their payday, but they're putting their lives at risk at the same time, which is why the payday is so big when wrestlers go to Saudi Arabia. That is why Brock Lesnar is booked for Saudi Arabia because he wants that moolah, and that's why the belt is going to stay on him for an uncertain amount of time. We really don't know what's going to happen. What do you think about uh, the rest of the buildup of the card? Well, I think it sucks big time. The way Kofi Kingston was booked to face Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania, having these series of gauntlet matches, and then the recent gauntlet match was incredibly boring. I mean, the finish was absolutely horrendous. You said the gauntlet match was good. Well, the first gauntlet match was good. The second one was okay until Vince McMahon decided to add another opponent to the match. But the final gauntlet match was absolutely horrible. Wait, wait. The second gauntlet match? Yeah, Kofi Kingston had a gauntlet match before Elimination Chamber. Then a couple of weeks ago, Kofi Kingston had another uh, gauntlet match, and he faced six men. And then, and then the tag team had a gauntlet match. Yeah, and what? the only highlight of the gauntlet match from the tag team part was the new, the Usos forfeiting to the New Day. I mean, that was the only thing that could have made the whole thing believable, but the finish was just horrible. And Vince McMahon, do you think, do you think they're going to push? Well, you know what? That, this, is, this is a good time to bring up Daniel Bryan versus Kofi Kingston. Do you think... Do you think that they are willing to give Kofi Kingston the belt? No, because what's going to happen is there's going to be dissension in the ranks with the New Day at WrestleMania, and Big E is going to take exception to a remark from Kofi Kingston. He's going to interfere and cost Kofi Kingston the world uh, championship match. And, of course, they're going to keep the belt on Daniel Bryan. What what remark? He's going to say some sort of remark. I mean, people are already predicting that Big E is going to turn heel at WrestleMania. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Why would he do that? I want to see... Uh, the, are, you think they would, they would just move down the line and have Big E versus Daniel Bryan at Elimination Chamber? Not Elimination, uh, Extreme Rules. Well, that could be the case, you know, but I think what's going to happen is that Kofi is going to get screwed out of the title and they're going to have a feud. You know, Kofi and Big E are going to have a feud. The New Day is going to end. And that's going to set up a meteoric, uh, meteoric event between Kofi Kingston and... Uh, Biggie along the way, but no, there's never going to be a black world heavyweight champion as long as Vince McMahon's running the company. There's been plenty. Who? Uh, Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is Samoan. <laughs> uh, the Rock. The Rock is Samoan. Yeah, half Samoan. But he still counts as Samoan nonetheless. <laughs> uh, Booker T. WCW champion. No. He was world heavyweight. Which is not the big belt. <laughs> You're killing me. Uh, oh, Mark Henry. ECW. He had the world. He had a he had a championship. Yeah, but not, it was not the big belt. Uh, it kind of was. At one point, that was when the big I belt. say WWE championship, I mean WWE championship, not any other second rate belt out there. So no, there's no black that used world to be the main belt. one. What is the world heavyweight? Yeah, back when it was on WCW. No, the World Heavy Championship was the big one when it was on Raw. Remember, Edge took it to SmackDown. And John Cena took the WWE to Raw. But the WWE Championship has always been the WWE Championship. It doesn't matter what other belt there is. So, so at, one, at one point, the World Heavyweight Ch- Championship was the main belt. But still, there was never a WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, you're killing me. I'm stating facts. You don't know what the facts are. <laughs> we, I mean, we've had a black NWA. Oh, Bobby Lashley. ECW champion. <laughs> he was in WWE? No. Kill- let, oh. me t- let me tell you facts. NWA World Heavyweight Champion. There were only two NWA World Heavyweight Champions that were recognized as black. Boba Brazil and Ron Killings. Then in WCW, you had Ron Simmons and Booker, and Booker T. I forgot about TNA... ROH, you got G- Jay Lethal as a black world heavyweight champion. Yeah. So tell me, was there ever a WWE champion that was black? I guess not. 
And why I don't not? think it's ever going to happen because of racism in WWE. I mean, you have Vince McMahon and you got creative that are racist. Ah, well, that's frustrating. If it's true. Well, it's it is true because Vince McMahon never put a belt on the black on a black wrestler. Let's uh, let's move along down this line. How about the Boss and Hug connection? Yeah, uh, versus the uh, the Divas of Doom. Is this supposed to be a fatal four way? Oh wait, wait, oh yeah, it's fatal four way. So it's, it's Boss and Hug, uh, Divas of Doom, the Iconics, and Nia Jax and Tamina for the tag team women's championship. Well, I'm predicting that. It- I hate to say this, but I'm predicting that Nia Jackson to me are going to get the belts. Yeah, probably. Get it at Mania. Because let's face it, Sasha Banks and Bailey, they're not baby. They're not big, good babyface uh, tag team champions at all. I mean, it's hard for a crowd to cheer for a team that should have feuded with each other last year, but WWE failed to pull the trigger, so it's hard to get behind them. See, I thought they were going to do. Uh, Nia Jax versus Dean Ambrose. Well, that would have been a hell of a send-off for Dean Ambrose considering that he's about to serve his 90-day no-compete clause after his contract expires. Yeah. Yeah, That's intense. It is. Sucks that he's going to be leaving. Or is it all just a work? Well, I think he's going to be leaving because we still have no updates on... His contract signings and other stuff like that. And even so, I don't think it'd be worth coming back because he's going to get buried again. All right, let's move on to this one some people might be talking about. Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. Total waste. <laughs> of who? Of Drew McIntyre. Why? Because I feel that he should have had a better feud along the way. As a matter of fact... He should have been the one to win the Royal Rumble and face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania because that would have been more epic than Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins because, again, we've seen Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins so many times that Brock Lesnar needs a fresher opponent. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. I can agree with that. How about, uh, uh, well, well, Roman Reigns, man. He's just, he's fresh off his leukemia. Oh, you get me started on that leukemia? That is nothing more than a lie. No, it's not. There is no proof that Roman Reigns had leukemia. Otherwise, he would have shown a video of him getting treated or something. Why why would he just display himself getting treated? Better yet, why not release documents proving that he had chemotherapy? Why is everything a conspiracy? Because there's no evidence out there to prove to us that he had cancer. Therefore, it is... Not believable, and I mean, it'll it never be believable until the truth comes out. It does seem pretty quick. I'm not, I'm, look, I'm not knowledgeable about leukemia to know how long it lasts or how long it can come up and go back into re- remission or whatever. The average leukemia patient has to have treatment for 14 months. So how long did he do it? When was he diagnosed? October? Oh, yeah. And what month is it? November, December, January, February, March. Five months. That's very suspicious. Well, he's had it before, so maybe they knew how to uh, cure his. Uh, I'm just saying that it may come back to bite him later this year, and it may come back strong if it is actually true. But I don't think that he truly had leukemia. We're going to wait until the evidence finally comes out. So why would he fake leukemia? Because WWE wants money. That's why they're exploiting cancer. (laughs) No. Vince McMahon is... (laughs) Well, he is a genius, I'll give you that, but Vince McMahon is also a scumbag. (laughs) You think he would exploit cancer to make people feel bad for Roman Reigns so people would cheer for him finally? That is the exact reason (laughs) you just brought a good point to the table. (laughs) Roman Reigns is exposed. (laughs) You think think that they would would tell Roman Reigns to pretend to have leukemia again? Because apparently he did have leukemia once. Yeah, and I know there's evidence that he had it back then. But you're saying that he would fake having it again, so you could go take a break, shoot a movie with The Rock, and, <laughs> and so, the fans, so the fans would like him. Yes, that was exactly what Vince McMahon wanted to do to Roman Reigns, so he could do a film and take some time off so he could recover from his injuries. That was the whole point of that thing. And they used leukemia. Yes. Why?! Because leukemia is a big deal. Don't you think? Don't you think if WWE got f- found it out by that, they would get in so much trouble well, with their partnerships? Are, well, they're already in trouble because 
They got a lot of backlash for this whole stupid storyline to begin with. By who? By many fans that didn't buy into it. Because hmm. they knew the truth. <laughs> I think you're trying to troll me. Do you really believe this? Yeah, I believe that Roman Reigns was faking his leukemia to get people to like him because it's a business strategy. <laughs> well, that's intense if it's true. I don't know. I guess we'll wait for the developing story. Is anyone looking into this? Who's all looking into this? Well, a lot of people that were doing interviews uh, for WWE and independent promotions because they're very suspicious about how this whole leukemia thing works, so they've been doing research about this, and... Hopefully someday the truth will come out about why they did this to Roman Reigns. <laughs> uh, moving on to the Intercontinental Championship match, we have Bobby Lashley versus Finn Balor. Boring. We've seen this a hundred times on Raw. I know. Already. I want. I wish Bobby Lashley would have been going against Brock Lesnar or someone. Man, I would take Bobby Lashley versus. Uh, Fuck it. Oh, what's his name? Uh, Braun Strowman over this. Oh, Braun Strowman. Poor Braun. We'll, we'll get to him in a minute. But, uh, Bobby Lashley and Finn Balor. Yeah, but yeah, you think Finn Balor's going to go to the demon route? Even if he does, it's still not going to save the match. Because we've already seen it a hundred times. If it was a one-time match that would occur again at WrestleMania, then that'd be a, bit, that'd be a different story. But we've seen this a hundred times on Raw already. Yeah, what? Well, I remember, I remember when WrestleMania matches used to be first-time evers. I remember when WrestleMania matches would be very prestigious. They'd be built up well, but obviously Vince McMahon has gone bonkers in 2019 and not booked the thing properly. <laughs> so, so who thinks winning? Uh, wait, we haven't talked about who's all going to win all this. Um, who's winning against? Uh, okay, I bet Roman Reigns is beating Drew McIntyre. Uh, of course, and the crowd's going to boo him like hell. Uh, you think uh, Lashley retains or Baylor wins? I think Lashley's going to retain. Okay, moving on, we got the United States Championship match. We have Rey Mysterio versus the champion Samoa Joe. Oh, Samoa Joe has been buried during his championship reign. He hasn't had any quality matches, and I feel bad for the guy. I feel bad for our truth yeah, he should have kept that belt, but you know he was what? Doing, it was Samoa he, Joe's time. He was doing good. And there's a there's a rumor going around that if John Cena doesn't face Kurt Angle, that John Cena might be facing our truth in a in a uh, in a in a match during WrestleMania. But the question is, will it be a retirement match for either? No, no. I think it's just like a kind of like a um just a random match because I uh, just to go off the storyline of our truth and how he was it was funny did you catch that our truth he was doing those promos saying he was he looked up to John Cena but our truth is older than John Cena so it makes no sense of course it makes no sense not to mention that our <laughs> truth has been in the wrestling business a lot longer than John Cena i mean if you remember 1999 he was at WWE as K Quick during the Attitude era and John Cena wasn't even around in WWE until 2002 so it makes no sense and the irony was that when John Cena debuted in WWE Ron Killings, our truth was in TNA as the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. <laughs> is that is, that's just funny, huh? Yeah, it that's is. just funny. I want to see that match. I think I think they're gonna do. A, I think if they do go that route and head, give them a match, I think that'd be fun. It'd be fun to see our truth versus uh, John Cena. I think that I think it pushes our truth to heal, though. I think we we get a our truth heal again, and uh, our truth as a heel is always uh, fun. Do you think little Jimmy will make his return? No, I don't know. I don't know. But I think it's funny that just just a few years ago, whenever he did feud with John Cena, the original storyline was that he hated the fact that John Cena was so popular, going as far as destroying his merch table and all kinds of stuff. And now, this storyline, he does a 360 and loves John Cena and looks up to him. <laughs> Whoever whoever is writing this story is on crack. Our truth, our truth is like a bipolar person. They have, they just have them be crazy. But um, anyways, uh, so you have you have Bobby Lashley winning. Oh, Samoa Joe and Rey Mysterio. Who's winning that? <sighs> this is gonna be a tough one because both men are experienced wrestlers. There. This might be the most unpredictable match of the night. Uh, 
Well, because I think I think they might give it to Rey Mysterio. Yeah, considering how Samoa Joe has been buried, I'm gonna have to agree with you. Because Rey Mysterio has been given somewhat of a of a like a minor push. They've been trying to put him into the main event scene, and they might as well just give him the uh, the the minor championship, and then probably have him feud against uh, someone like Randy Orton again or something. Yeah, I agree with you on that because Samoa Joe has been buried as champion and I don't think he'll be able to carry the belt much longer. Why do you think they're burying Samoa Joe because he was in TNA? Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of uh, WWE wrestlers over uh, that were in TNA have been buried except for AJ Styles. I mean, AJ Styles got a good push as WWE champion, but even so, he had some last lackluster matches. I mean, all champions do. Now before we before we get on to AJ Styles, let's go and get it, get on to the the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Bathroom break. <laughs> Why? Because Braun Strowman's gonna win. No, I think Braun Strowman's gonna get eliminated by Mojo Rawley. Yeah. You think so? Yeah, because Mojo Rawley is a psycho, and that would help give him a push if he wins the uh, Memorial Battle Royal. You hear that? Uh, they might have a uh, Gronk might come back again. Supposedly, Cause, well, because Gronk, I think I think Gronk just retired from football, and he might do a, a minor run in WWE. Yeah, ten million dollar appearance for WrestleMania for Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, I guess. Oh, he really is doing that. Well, I'm hoping not, but if that's the case, he'll probably get paid ten million. Oh my goodness! So you think you, you think uh, Braun Strowman is just a? Uh, you think he's finished? You think he's he think burying he, him? Uh, I think he's finished with WWE. I mean, he might as well let his contract expire and go back to strongman competition. Uh, you don't think he's going to get another push ever? Nope. Ever since he exposed himself for his poor promo skills against Brock Lesnar, that's been a downturn. Damn. That sucks, man. Braun Strowman was so entertaining. That's why you do not give somebody scripted promos. You let them speak off the cuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because I've seen Braun Strowman's interviews in strongman competitions. He can talk. He <laughs> could cut a promo. I believe it. I believe it. Uh, moving on, we got AJ Styles versus Randy Orton. Oh, this is gonna be a good one. Yeah, this one. This one's gonna be fun. This one's probably gonna be one of the more um, uh, entertaining of the matches. I think Randy gets the win. Well, it could be AJ Styles. We don't know. You think AJ will win? Well, yeah. I mean, no. I think I think they I think they like. Well, I think WWE. I think WWE likes giving Randy Orton the uh, the RKO out of nowhere type of thing, and I think we're gonna see AJ. He's gonna go for the uh, the phenomenal forearm, and then Randy Orton's gonna hit the RKO. I will admit, though, this is going to be a tough event to call. However, Randy Orton has a poor booking at WrestleMania. He's lost the, he, I think he's lost the majority of his WrestleMania matches besides the uh, uh, Rock and Sock connection versus Evolution. He also defeated CM Punk at WrestleMania. Oh, did he? Mm-hmm. I missed that, I guess. I, know, I, guess I, I forget all about that. But he lost to Kane. He lost to Kane. He lost to, he lost to a few people. He won the WWE Championship against Bray Wyatt. Well, you know, I can be wrong sometimes. <laughs> I can be wrong. But, but I'm going to say this. This is going to be an unpredictable finish. Okay, yeah, this one. Nah. I, I'm saying Randy. I think Randy's a little predicted to win. I think, I, think they can, I think they know they can easily push AJ wherever, and AJ's going to do well. I think Randy Orton is st- starting to slump into the roster now, even though he's been a main eventer for a long time. And I think they're gonna give him the uh, the win, so he can so he, that way he can go on and face uh, not necessarily Daniel Bryan, but he can go on and feud with Rey Mysterio for the uh, U.S. Championship. Well, you predict that uh, Randy Orton's gonna win, but I'm gonna say AJ Styles. Okay, okay. Uh, how about uh, your most? This is Ed Ray one four one six's most anticipated match of the night. This is the match he is going to be looking for, forward to the whole night. He's going to be waiting for it, craw- clawing for the chance to see this match. Shane McMahon versus The Miz in a false count anywhere's match. It's my, I, 
I'm just so torn about this match even existing in the first place because Miz is a terrible baby face and Shane McMahon, he may be good as a heel, but I'm not buying it. You don't buy it? No, I don't buy Shane McMahon's But he's heel. happy that he beat up his uh, him in front of his dad or something. And that gives Shane more credibility as a performer. Oh, uh, you think? Yeah, because Miz's dad was a deadbeat. Oh, why, why was he a deadbeat? He didn't give a damn about his son. Well, that's sad. And even so, I but just, they made, I just they, hate the crowd. They made it false count anywhere. That means it's going to be crazy hardcore. They're going to it's gonna, they're gonna make it look like it's uh, uh, Roddy Piper versus uh, Goldust. And every time there's a false count anywhere match, the crowd is going to cheer for Shane McMahon because Shane McMahon is a natural at any stipulation, you know, hardcore match, no disqualification, last man standing. He is experienced in all of them. Miz, on the other hand, they're just making this storyline to push uh, Miz as a babyface, and it's not working. You don't think Miz is going to do something crazy? Like what, fall off a scaffold? He might. If he could do that, then he earned my respect. <laughs> you, don't think, you don't think the Miz is capable of doing uh, the crazy stuff, the crazy uh, face? Well, the way he's been booked, no. And even if he was booked right as a babyface, I still wouldn't buy it. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on, we kind of t- we touched on this a little bit, but um, we're going to go ahead and touch on it just a little bit more. Kurt Angle versus Baron Corbin. Kurt Angle's farewell match. This is the stupidest <laughs> match that has ever been booked in WrestleMania history. As a matter of fact, in professional wrestling history, because Baron Corbin cannot I, keep up with Kurt Angle. Baron Corbin is a previous uh, Andre the Giant Battle Royal winner. And look where he went. Look what happened to him. What happened? He didn't go anywhere, so they <laughs> gave him a crappy job as general manager. He got booed out of the building so many times. Baron Corbin is the reason why profes- that WWE's ratings in general has fallen because Raw's ratings also dictate SmackDown ratings. And because of what Baron Corbin has done as general manager, he doesn't even deserve to be in the league that Kurt Angle was in. I believe you. But uh, do you, what do you think about my prediction of it being a, uh, a very quick match and then someone else comes out? You think they're, they're not brave enough to do that? You think they're going to keep their, keep with their guns and keep it barren versus angle? Oh, they've done it before. I mean, unless WWE's crowds hijack the show at the go-home show. No, sorry. Yeah. Unless WWE can do something at WrestleMania out of nowhere, I don't know. <laughs> uh. So this one's a random match that just got, you know, was booked, uh, was it, a week ago? Triple H versus Batista in a no-holds-bar match. If Triple H loses, he must retire as a wrestler. I don't want to see that match. <laughs> what? No-holds-bar. They made it no-holds-bar. It's going to be classic how is attitude. It gonna, how's it going to top their match at WrestleMania 21? It's not, but it's going to be a, a, a classic attitude era match. I don't want to watch it. Pure and simple. They're, it's going to be boring. <laughs> but they're going to go crazy, you don't think? It's hard for them to go crazy when they're in their 50s compared to their 30s. You don't think Batista can bring it? After his last run in WWE a couple of years ago, no way. <laughs> so what's been there? They've, they've wrestled a few times, huh? Yeah, but 2005 was where they wrestled the most. They had the 2005 feud of the year. You know, so this, this feud kind of comes out of nowhere. Did you see this coming? Well, it had to be obvious when uh, the Ric Flair celebration was going on. I mean, something was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I just thought maybe... I, You know what? I think what it was, I think they originally wanted to do Triple H versus The Rock. And instead, they're doing Batista. All I could say is which, that this which, better be which, the which, end for which, both men. Which would you have rathered? Well, as much as I like The Rock... Batista did very well as an actor himself, so I'm going to have to say, unfortunately, Triple H versus Batista. I don't want to see it, but it's going to happen. I understand. I understand. Uh, who do you think is winning this match? Probably Batista. You think Batista's going to win? Triple H isn't done wrestling. But if he is, though, then that means tri- uh, Batista is also going to be done with wrestling. Too. No, because you know Triple H has to wrestle at Saudi Arabia. And was, Batista's not wrestling at Saudi Arabia. He was advertised for Saudi Arabia? No, but you know that the Saudi Arabia prince wants him to wrestle. But if he was advertised in Saudi Arabia, then I would have changed my opinion. 
I think he's going to wrestle at Saudi. We'll see. Because the prince dictates what the matches are. We'll see. And he loves Triple H. That's why he's. That's why he. That's why Shawn Michaels came out of retirement. That's why Undertaker keeps wrestling once a year. I'm just saying that WrestleMania is going to be pretty bad this year. Uh, a random match that they're probably going to throw in at the uh, close to the end of the <laughs> the show. Uh, uh, Buddy Murphy versus Tony Nese for the Cruiserweight Championship. Normally, I would have said bathroom break, but you know, cruiserweight matches are always good. And I don't—I haven't been keeping up with the cruiserweight stuff, so I guess uh, Buddy Murphy to retain. I want to say Buddy Murphy as well. We'll have to see at WrestleMania. Moving on, Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins. You've already said you don't want to see this match. You've seen it too many times. You say Brock Lesnar's gonna win? Yeah, because he was apparently advertised to wrestle at Saudi Arabia. You don't think they're going to have a great match, fun match? If Seth Rollins and Brock Lesnar can work together, I mean, Brock Lesnar is an incredibly lazy wrestler. All he does is suplexes, F5s, and elbows to the face. That's awesome. Well, I want to see more than just that. I mean, if Seth, Rollins, if Seth Rollins could carry Brock Lesnar in this match just like Finn Balor did, I mean, then yeah, it will work. I mean, they, they definitely... Daniel... They, they, used, they used Daniel Bryan and Finn Balor as a way to show that the little guy can hurt the big guy. And they did that, I think, to set up Seth Rollins' win. I don't want this. I don't like Seth Rollins. I don't like his character. I think uh, that's why I want Brock Lesnar to win. I want Brock Lesnar to win. But I think Seth Rollins is going to win. No, I'm going to say that Brock Lesnar is going to win it. because Brock Lesnar has to wrestle at yeah. Saudi Arabia. They could do so a rematch. Gonna... He could be do- wrestling a rematch. A rematch where? At Saudi Arabia. He could be doing a rematch at Saudi Arabia for the title. And then he'd lose twice. But what do you, But don't you think the Saudi prince wants uh, Brock Lesnar to come in with the belt on his shoulders? We don't know. I'm just saying it's going to be a horrible match. We'll see. We'll see. Finally. The main event. The main event that's going to close the show for the first time ever. An all-women's main event. It is Charlotte Flair versus Becky Lynch versus Ronda Rousey for the WWE Women's Championship. What more can I say about this disaster of a three-way match? How's a disaster? The way they've been booked. If... It looks good. I, I would have rather it be a one-on-one with Ronda versus uh, Becky. But well, even so, WWE found a way to mess that up as well. Wait, is this going to be for both titles? It could be, and that'd be a bad thing because who's going to be... Because didn't Charlotte just win the women's championship? Oh, yeah, and I'll tell you what. That was one of the biggest... Oh. Oh, that was one of the biggest waste of opportunities I've ever seen. No, I know what's going to happen. Oh... Oscar's not booked, is she? No, because she lost the belt. Which means she's probably going to interfere and cost Charlotte the match. You think she cost Charlotte the match, and that's going to leave it? You think Oscar attacks Charlotte, and it's going to leave it to Ronda versus Becky? Well, if it ends up being a one-on-one situation, yeah, but I'm still terrified of how. That'd the be match, interesting. I'm still terrified of how the match is going to end because they don't have Oscar doing anything. So she's going to interfere in that match. She's going to interfere before the match or during the match. Yeah, and I think that'll be the end of Asuka afterward because they may end up firing her after WrestleMania. For what? Well, you know how WWE usually (laughs) fires a lot of people after WrestleMania season? She could end up being a victim of that. She's not that bad. I thought people like her. A lot of people do like her, but even good wrestlers have been fired after WrestleMania season before. Like who? Well, a lot of people from the Attitude Era. Okay. I believe you. For a second. So out of all these matches, which match are you most excited for? Personally, none. But if I say that one match comes close to being very good, or probably the best match on the card could be AJ Styles versus Randy Orton. Is that crazy that a grudge match could be the best match? Yeah, I mean, I'm not expecting it to be a five-star classic, but I'm saying that it could be the only good match at WrestleMania. Well, uh, which match would be? Would you be surprised if it's any good? Probably Rey Mysterio versus Samoa Joe. Oh, you don't think it's gonna be good? You said you'd be surprised. I, 
What's okay? What you think that one's gonna be the worst match, or you think it has potential? I mean, it, what, it has potential. I'm not saying that it's gonna be bad, but so which match is gonna be really? That you, which match do you think is gonna be super bad, and it would shock you if it was any good? The main event. The three way. Yeah. That's that's a top five of the night. If. Asuka does come in, interfere, and beat up Charlotte Flair, take her out of the match, then I'm worried about the ending. Ed Ray, that's, that's just your opinion. And that's fine. Because all we have here are opinions and beer. And with that, and with that, let's go ahead and get into the beer of the day. And today's beer of the day is Carbach. It's Carbach Brewing Company's Hella Cella. This is a spicy, it's considered an herbed, an herd beer, a field beer, or even a fruit beer. Um, it has, it's, it's a tex mess. It says it's mixed with Tex-Mex and citrus and it's Hella Cella. Hella Cella means a hell of a lot. I didn't know. <laughs> hell of a lot. It means a <laughs> But uh, it's five percent alcohol by volume. Has a IBU of thirteen. I'm gonna smell it real quick. God, yeah, it does not smell good. It smells like, it smells like uh, Enchiritos or something. Like I don't know. Like Enchiritos smell good, but I sniff. What's that? What's that hot sauce? What's like that? Like there's like a hot um. Like enchilada sauce. It smells like enchilada sauce. I'm going to uh, pour this beer and we're going to try it. I hope it's good. <laughs> I hope it tastes better than it uh, smells. You can see it has a nice little, a pretty light color right there. It's a little, the color is very light. Oh, it smells like hot sauce, man. Why does it smell like this? I just ate something too that I probably should be mixing with. It's very uh, the carbonation it has, it's very heavy in carbonation. This is like one of the heaviest carbonated beers I've had to pour. That was like a lot of carbonation. I don't know. It's like an odd amount, or it's just more than average. Man, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try this beer. Hope it doesn't suck. I hope it doesn't suck. Carbock. I have faith in you. Usually I love every beer you make. So hopefully this spicy Hella Cella beer uh, doesn't suck. <coughs> it tastes like it tastes like fucking flaming Cheetos or something, man. I don't know. This this tastes like something's gonna be missed. Uh, <laughs> that is not good. It tastes like fucking. You know I've had spicy beer before. It's like I have a I have had like crawfish, tasting beer or something. They had like crawfish seasoning in it and it had like that minor spice. But this tastes like freaking enchiladas, in it. And I just maybe I don't even think I like enchiladas. I like to eat them, I like to mix them with sour cream, but this enchiladas or like Doritos, like hot Doritos, like flaming Doritos, but like if it was liquefied, that is not good. This is probably, I do not like the taste of this at all. This is, I'm going to be giving this out as a funny beer. Like, oh, try this spicy beer. See what people's reactions are. Yeah, perfect for April Fool's Day. <laughs> uh, which is, the, I know this is the day after April Fool's, but. Oh, I don't know, man. I'm going to give that a, I, I wish someone else was here with me to tell me if it was good. Um, I'm going to give, I'm going to give this a one. <laughs> I can't even drink, I took one sip, I can't even, I'm not even going to, uh, I don't know if I can drink any more of it. I should have, I should have got the damn Astros beer. Instead of this, this seemed interesting. I'm like, oh, spicy beer. I've liked spicy. Beer. Like I said, I, I've liked spicy beer before. I've had a, uh, well, I've had three so far. This is my third spicy beer. And the first one was really good. The second one, 
was not that good, and this one is really not good. The second one tastes like chili. The first one didn't really taste like anything. It just had that. Sp it t it tastes like a like a regular lager, I guess, or like not maybe not a lager, but it, I don't know. I can't explain. It. it had like it was more of a crawfish taste, more like uh, than a um Tex Mex taste. Which you know what? Maybe I should make it a two because it, it 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 is saying at least I'll give I'll give Carbach one thing. It tastes exactly like it promotes because it even says Tex Mex. It tastes like Tex Mex, and this tastes like yes enchiladas from like your local Mexican restaurant and that is not good anyways uh shit enjoy Wrestlemania guys damn it open hands and feet.